everybody and welcome to Favorite Rugby on Favorite Sports for today's Six Nations Round 4 review. Uh, what a round it was. Uh, massive, massive upsets on the cards and uh, then a very dominant victory uh, coming from France who finally sort of clicked into gear and kind of looked a bit more like the France of old. Having said that, maybe it is also a reflection of where Wales are. But uh, an interesting weekend with regards to the rugby world order and especially within the Six Nations sort of identifying which teams are dominant and what the kind of gap is between teams. The big question and the big sort of topic at the moment is that England beating the alleged best team in the world. Are they the best team in the world? We're going to talk a little bit about that and uh, all the conversations that are currently um, having uh, being, uh, or being, being had over on various social media platforms as well as... Uh, um, in, in, in sort of studio discussion, stuff like that. But before we do that, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Right. The Six Nations was blown wide open uh, ahead of the final weekend with um, theoretically four teams in contention to potentially uh, win the Six Nations from a mathematical perspective. Lots of stuff will have to happen for that all to come true. Um, but also uh, two teams in contention for that wooden spoon race, for example. So uh, still a lot to play for. Every single team with something to play for this weekend, which I think is... Uh, very, very exciting. Um, although I do think that we've been robbed of what would have essentially have been a Six Nations final um, had Scotland been awarded that victory against uh, France a few weeks ago, which I believe they should have been. But let's start with Scotland, shall we? Against Italy, uh, a game where, and again, as much as I love the upset, I'm, I'm sad for the occasion for this week. But uh, Scotland coming undone, and uh, we kind of saw the reason why Scotland continue to struggle as a top sort of five or six team in the world. They struggled to put that 80-minute performance in. Um, look, credit to Italy. They stay within the fight. But I thought that Scotland in the early stages looked really, really good. Um, and it was all about whether they can um, they can come back in the second half and get it done. They couldn't do that. And Italy came back, got themselves in the lead, kept Scotland out. And Michelle Lamoro made 27 tackles, by the way, um, to, to help his side get over the line. 31 points to 29. I mean, what an absolutely phenomenal victory it is for Italy. They currently sit... Um, in fifth place uh, in, on the table. And taking on Wales this weekend, we could potentially get seven, uh, two Six Nations victories. Uh, if the, the, the results go the right way, they could actually end up in third, um, which is incredibly exciting for a team that, um, you know, has always been sort of for, for the wooden spoon. People even talking about them being kicked out of the Six Nations. The fact that they managed to beat Scotland, this is the Scotland side, which I think did beat France, did beat England, um, did beat Wales, and... Um, now I have a very big game against Ireland this weekend. Uh, shows you how far that Italian side have come. But obviously the big result of the weekend was England beating Ireland. Now, is it a shock? A 100%. Is it a massive upset? 100%. Um, is it one of the best results we've ever seen? Um, an interesting one. I don't think it necessarily is. You know, I think we're talking about an Irish side who have been dominant uh, for a long, long time. Uh, we know this. They, we know they've got ridiculously good win streaks, for example. Um, they've dominated the, the top of the world rankings, for example, for the last sort of two years and stuff like that. And uh, as a result, you know, especially going into this this last um, weekend, they have been referred to as the, the best team in the world. And and they have been really, really solid. You think that they beat uh, New Zealand in New Zealand in that series back in 2022, for example, in, in 23. I don't think they lost a game. Um, but... They've been pushed close over the years, for example. I mean, if you go back a year ago, uh, they beat uh, Italy by 14 points, and this is an Italian side which nobody really rates. Um, and uh, they, if you go back two years ago, they only just beat Australia down the back there. But they have, without a doubt, been the dominant side uh, in, in the past few years. Uh, best team in the world. Well, the South Africans are obviously quite upset about that, that term, and, and I think rightly so, to be perfectly honest, you know. Currently, the world rankings have South Africa at number one after the World Cup win and obviously won the World Cup. Now, you know, you can talk about, yes, one point here, one point there and stuff like that. But the silverware is silverware. And Scott, I mean, Ireland once again couldn't get past the quarterfinal, for example. So, so, so you know, went out in the World Cup. Um, and a week later, in the semifinals, this England side, yes, there are a couple of changes, pushed South Africa, the current world champions, to within a point and uh, showed just how good they can be as a team. Um, so whilst I think that they have been, haven't been great in uh, the Six Nations so far, you can see it was a team trying something, building onto something, and we're getting progressively a bit better. 
Um, so whilst this is a very impressive victory for, for England, um, you know, is it as big a shock as we're all thinking? You know, if you look now, Ireland, for example, have beaten South Africa quite regularly in the last few years. And that's why I think this big um, this, this series in the beginning of the year, middle of the year is going to be so interesting. Uh, because I think the South Africans are be feeling, you know, a bit disrespected. And I think you, I think they can be portrayed at the idea that no one's willing to give the Springboks benefit of the doubt and call them the best side in the world when they are the current world champions, you know. Um, and I think, you know, for all those that are, will say, you know, oh, well, you guys are just triggered or whatever, I think if the roles are reversed, if Ireland had gone to one, win the World Cup, you know, but South Africa had the similar... If the roles were reversed, I'm saying, if Ireland won the World Cup, for example, South Africa had been the team that had been dominating, you know, over the last few years... I don't think Irish fans are going to be sitting there saying, oh, yeah, but we, you know, we acknowledge that South Africa are actually better side. We just won the World Cup. Um, so, you know, maybe this, this result, for example, shows you that maybe this Ireland side do have, um, you know, issues. You know, maybe they do. They are some chinks in the armor. Um, so, look, we haven't really seen it so far in the Six Nations, but we've seen France be really poor in the Six Nations, for example. We know that Wales have been uh, are, are a brand new team and, and have been very poor. And... Um, when they came up against, for me, probably the second, the second, North, I think Scotland and England are probably the two best teams in the Six Nations so far. From a consistent point of view, uh, France has have for me haven't really been there. Um, they lost to England, so a huge game this weekend. I think they'll probably beat Scotland, but I think Scotland will be sitting there thinking, "Well, we beat England um, pretty comfortably, actually. So why can't we have a go at Ireland?" And it's amazing if Scotland were to beat us Ireland this weekend. I think the entire aura, the entire concept of them being the best team in the world disappears like that. I think it generally does. You know, because all of a sudden, England have beaten them, Scotland have beaten them, New Zealand have beaten them in a quarterfinal. All of a sudden, they've been beaten, you know, three times in their last six or seven games. Uh, so that's going to be a very interesting con conversation. And then finally, again, as I said, France looked so much better against Wales. Wales are very disappointed with. Um, so I think that there are such good players in the Welsh side. I think they will be very competitive in the years to come. Um, I think Gatlin's doing the right thing. I think he's gone with quite a, lot, a young group. I think he's giving players uh, chances. Um, they're not competitive at the moment. Uh, but I do think that we've seen um, some young players stand up. I mean, Daft Jenkins put in 26 tackles, for example, um, and, and I think that this, this Welsh side will grow. Uh, but if you look at the log going into the final uh, weekend, this is why it is so exciting, because Ireland kind of was 16 points. Now, once again, I said, if Scotland had been awarded their win against France, they would have been sitting, I believe, on 14 points. And so it would have been a, a shootout. It would have been a dogfight. Ireland versus Scotland, winner takes all type thing. And I think that would have been very exciting. So Scotland can mathematically still win the Six Nations. However, they do need to beat uh, Ireland with a bonus point and a pretty big points difference. England, on the other hand, can beat Ireland uh, from a points perspective. If Scotland were to beat Ireland and deny Ireland a losing bonus point, England were to beat France, which is going to be a great game this weekend, um, uh, they could potentially win the Six Nations. So similarly, France as well, mathematically, can also win the Six Nations, but they all need various results to go against each other. Uh, Italy versus Wales, well, that's the battle for the wooden spoon, isn't it? And they are playing against each other this weekend, which makes it quite exciting, um, because you know, we've seen it in the, in the past. That often been the last game of the of the of the, the championship. Um, it'll be the first game of this weekend. But uh, Italy, you know, get, to get two wins for them um, would be huge in the Six Nations in their, you know, uh, rise to the top. So a very a very interesting weekend we've just had, and a very interesting weekend. Uh, coming up now as well let me know what you thought of it all down in the comments below please do smash like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well thank you very much for watching my name is steve i'll chat to you soon